another episode of the Cozy Cottage Crochet Podcast. My name is Hannah and this is a podcast all about crochet, a little bit of knitting, sometimes sewing, and generally living the yarniest life possible in St. Petersburg, Florida, where I live. This is the second, second episode of November and we will have one after Thanksgiving and then who knows if we'll have another one before the baby comes or not. I don't know. Stay tuned. I will keep you updated. I have so much to talk to you about. There's literally so many things <laughs> in this stack over here. But first, if you're looking for me anywhere on the interweb, you can find me as The Cozy Cottage Crochet on Instagram and Facebook. You can also email me at thecozycottagecrochet at gmail.com for anything related to the podcast that is the best way to get a hold of me. Now, something very exciting. <laughs> We have a sponsor for this episode, which I am really excited about because I worked with them last year and they sent me some beautiful stuff and I kind of interrogated them a little bit <laughs> and then I was really excited to work with them and they're a sponsor for me again this year. Now I'm gonna show you the pieces I received last year and the ones that are coming in the mail to me this year via photo <laughs> because the mail does not run today, it's Veterans Day and there's a tropical storm on so they're not gonna get here on time but I will insert some photos and then I'll show them in the next video as well. So the company that is sponsoring this episode is called Ana Luisa and they're a jewelry company and this necklace is one that they sent me last year. It's just this beautiful silver chain and then also my favorite piece is this ring. I don't know how well it's gonna focus, but just like that. I got this ring a year ago because I participated in their Black Friday campaign. I always like to wear a ring on this finger on my hand and typically I wear a spoon ring, but I, I'm always looking for good silver rings to wear and this was fantastic. So I have been wearing this nonstop. I've been wearing it for a year and it's still shiny and beautiful and brand new. But what I will say is, I have especially been wearing it since I was since I got pregnant because my fingers are slightly swollen. You may notice that I have a rubber band, not a rubber band, but like a, a silicone wedding ring on because mine doesn't quite fit at the moment. And this one I have been wearing nonstop for months and it is perfect. It still fits me, it slides on and off easily, and it's gorgeous and I love it. So I can vouch for the quality. One of the things that I like about Ana Luisa is. They are very environmentally conscious, so their packaging is recycled, they're and recyclable, they're gold, they only use recycled gold, and they're silver, they only use recycled silver as well. And that was one of the things that I had asked originally when they first reached out to me last year to do, um, to send me something, is like what kind of ethics do you have as a company? So they are actually, this I believe, has just happened in the last year. They're like 100% carbon neutral now. So they offset 100% of their carbon emissions. And I personally just really like their stuff. So I'm gonna insert some pictures of what will be coming in the mail that I'll show you like close-ups of next time. So there's these little safety pin earrings, which I'll insert a picture of here or here somewhere. And they look like stitch markers to me so I, Thought that they were the cutest thing in the world. Then there is a pair of earrings that say love on the bottom and I've never seen earrings that do this that like have a little jewel and then they say love underneath your ear. And then the last one is necklace that says mama. Oh my god so cute. So I'm really excited <laughs> about those and especially the stitch marker look like safety pin earrings. I just think they're fabulous. So I have a special code a special link that will take you to their Black Friday sale. And they will know if you click, if you go to their site clicking on this link that you came from me. So I'll put it on the screen. It is www.analuisa.com slash Cozy Cottage BF. And I will link it directly down below in the drop down so you can click on it. And I just think they're great gifts. I know some of you actually purchased some jewelry from Ana Luisa as gifts last year or for yourself with the Black Friday special and I got some messages that you loved it and that the pieces were really great and that they've held up and that they're my favorite thing affordably priced. I think this ring I don't remember exactly how much it was I think their pieces started like 39 bucks so for a ring that lasts me <laughs> that I'm gonna wear every single day 
I think that's a great price. I'm a big fan of not buying cheap stuff, <laughs> even like saving for something that you want. And also I cannot wear jewelry that is fake. So it has to be like at least plated in gold or silver for my skin to take it because my skin will turn green and earrings specifically I can't handle at all if they're not real. They just make my ears hurt and it's terrible. So highly recommend. I love the company. I love working with them. I love wearing this ring and this necklace all the time and I'm happy to show you in the next video when they arrive the pieces and I think that you're gonna love them too and it's a company that I will vouch for because I've used them in the past and I'm really excited that they're sponsoring this video. You should check out their Black Friday sale. <laughs> now what am I wearing on my head? It's probably not gonna stay because I'm already feeling a little hot. I turned, we have a ceiling fan, but this one makes like really weird noises. So I turned it off so it wouldn't pick up in the video. So this is my November sky beanie, which I am wearing because obviously it is November. It is a pattern that I have published after much deliberation and brain scratching. And it is this beanie pattern. It's got cape, a little cable detail. And then the decreases were what really ruined my life. <laughs> Cause they all go in like a point to this, like this to a point. So this is this, this the pattern sample <laughs> you can see. Um, the first one I made was actually out of Malabrigo yarn and you can barely see the cable detail because it's such a variegated yarn. But this is a yarn that I got in the UK when my husband and I were there in 2018. And then this one, after I finally figured out how to write up the pattern <laughs> and send it to testers, I made one more just to make sure that the instructions matched and so this yarn is she pappen's yarn it's a color i had left over and i had just enough i mean just enough to make this hat so i'm not gonna quite take it off yet i'm not hot enough yet to take it off but it's my november sky beanie and it is available on Ravelry. If you're, if Ravelry is not accessible to you, you can always email me at thecozycottagecrochet at gmail.com and I can work with you to get you a pattern directly. I do not have an Etsy shop or patterns anywhere else just because that's not feasible for my life. But I am more than happy to get you a pattern a different way if Ravelry is not accessible to you. So it's November, hence November Sky Beanie, which I'm very excited about. Now, I have a lot, a lot to talk about. There are two finished objects that you saw last time that were not quite finished because they were needing buttons. And so I feel the need to share them in their finished glory with you. And then I have, this is gonna be a little bit of a knitting heavy episode because I have three knitting projects, which is not normal for me, but I also have three crochet projects. So buckle up, grab your favorite thing to drink or eat or whatever, and we are gonna jump right in. So the first thing I'm gonna show you is these buttons. <laughs> I This was not blocked last time. This is a Tunisian cowl pattern that I am working on in Attic Spindai yarn. Attic Spindai is Andy and Angela. They're in the UK. They hand dye this beautiful yarn. This They sent me this quite a while ago. This is their colorway Vibrant Iris, which is just gorgeous. So pretty. And this is Tunisian crochet. And I had finished it last time, but I hadn't blocked it and I didn't have the buttons. I got ridiculously oversized buttons <laughs> and I think it works so well. I'm so happy with it. This is a pattern that I am working on, but honestly, who knows when it's going to be released because life, I'm having a baby. So you, I'm going to put two versions of this pattern together. One will be just once around buttoned because of course there's a difference between the inside and the outside and I think the outside is the best part. So this will be a pattern coming sometime. Mine of course I made a little bit longer than a typical cowl. Normally you'd find a double loop cowl just a little bit more snug but I do not like feeling like I am being choked. So I made mine just a little bit longer and then I blocked it a little bit more aggressively than I normally would have. I, instead of just soaking and laying it flat, I stretched it because I want more room, but I love it. You could wear it just once around too. And of course, if you did not want fabulous buttons, you could totally forego the buttons altogether and just seam it up. But why would you do that? Buttons make the thing. So that is 
finished, finished, finished object number one. And the second one <laughs> was completely done last time except for buttons because I got the wrong size buttons. It is the Baby Gramps cardigan. <laughs> it is so cute. Everybody knows, everybody agrees that buttons on baby cardigans should be gigantic. These buttons are like two sizes bigger than the ones I used on my husband's cardigan. Oh my God, tiny buckets. I'm so happy it's done. <laughs> I haven't like, I took a picture of it like for Ravelry as a finished object photo, but I can't wait. I mean, obviously it's gonna take a little while for the baby to fit into this. This is the six to 12 month size in measurements. I made the two to four year old size in stitch count because I was using a DK weight yarn instead of worsted, which the pattern calls for. So the buttons are so down, <laughs> they're adorable, and I am so excited for my husband and this baby to have matching cardigans, and so is he. So those are the two finished, finished, finished objects. I don't have any other ones, but I do have a bunch of works in progress and a tale of woe and a whole lot of things to talk about. So I'm going to go through the two knitting projects that I talked about last time as to be because this will be the only time you see them until after the baby is born. These I specifically cast on and started so that I can pack them in my hospital bag and have some knitting to take with me. That is just stuck in it in the round. It requires zero brain power whatsoever. And I may not knit a single stitch, honestly, but not having yarn with me is going to give me massive anxiety, for sure. So, the first one is a pair of socks. It's living in my Rainbow Llamacorns bag, which is a sock bag I got from Slipped Stitch Studios. I love their bags. I cannot recommend them more. Crochet Luna got me one a long time ago. Um, I have that one, and then I purchased this one because I love their bag so much. And on here, I of course have a Crochet Luna pin, the Wizarding Mal 2020. That is a make along that I am hosting with her third quarter prizes roll. They're all out. Everybody has received them. The fourth quarter prizes will likely not go out until the end of January. <laughs> so I pulled an extra prize for that thread at the end or like mid October, whenever I recorded that episode, so that. It would buy a little extra time because the baby is coming. So <laughs> I'm going to take a bit of a break from podcasting, probably a month, maybe a little longer. Who knows? Um, but I will keep you guys posted as to what's going to happen. But I won't be able to pull prizes from that right away. So keep posting. There's a prompt for every month that you can make socks, you can sew the project bags, or you can do both. And what is living in here is Knit Picks Felici. I love Knit Picks Felici. It's so soft. This is the colorway Spring Blooms. It's a self-striping yarn. And I have done one toe, but wait. The second ball, two toes. And they're exactly the same. This second toe, I think I worked maybe like three extra rounds on because I finally, I started the green stripe and this one is still on the blue, but I started these magic loop and they are both on nine inch circulars now. I am pretty meticulous and specific about trying to match myself striping socks. So if <laughs> basically my process, let me put one of these down, is I take the ball and I make sure I wind off yarn until the beginning of a stripe. So for this one, I wound it off until the pink and then I did the same thing on the second ball. I wound off all the yarn until I got to a pink stripe. Then I took the same amount of pink yarn. Oh God. <laughs> I took the same amount of pink yarn from each ball to do the cast on. And it's rough, I would say within a few stitches, these socks should match. Unless my tension changes wildly or something. So they both have a pink toe and they're gonna match. And I'm not gonna do any kind of contrast heel or cuff or anything like that. They're just gonna be around and around. I should get like this much knitting on the foot on each one. So that's quite a bit of sock in it. I started these toe up. It's been a while since I've done toe up socks, but I was really happy because I do Judy's Magic cast on and I cast on 12 stitches on each needle. So 24. 
and then I start going around and around magic loop until I increase enough to get to 64 stitches because that's how many stitches I use for my socks. So I use Chowgu Red Lace 2.25 millimeter needles for all my socks. That's just how it goes. There's no exceptions to that. And as soon as I was done with the increases and got to 64 stitches, I put them on my nine inch circulars because that's how I like to knit socks. I am doing a heel flap and gusset on these. So I much prefer to do a heel flap and gusset toe up because I find it easier. I don't have to pick up any stitches or do any shenanigans. I just work it and go. I work it like attached to the sock. So basically I'm going to work it to my foot length, then do the increases, do the heel flap, and then I don't know how long I'm gonna make the legs. I'm kind of thinking I'm gonna make these longer socks just for like comfiness and lounging around the house. And also I really like that yarn. I really like Knit, Pitch, Knit, Knit Picks. <laughs> Knit Picks Felici yarn. And it's been a while since I have done any socks. Honestly, I've only done two pairs of socks this entire year because it was a little bit socked out from the year of the sock, which was last year, where I did 19 pairs of socks. That was a bit much, honestly. Although most of them were shorty socks, so do it that way you will. The second project that I am taking to the hospital with me in my hospital bag is living in this Tanny Casey project bag that has a sheep pen. I love this bag, it is perfect for a one skein project. And in here is the sock head hat. And you will not be seeing this one again either because it is to the point where I can go around and around. This is, the sock head pat pattern is by Kelly McClure. It's a free pattern on Ravelry and it might be free other places, I don't know. But this is what it is. I'm using a, what size millimeter? I think a 2.75 millimeter needle for the ribbing and a 3.25 millimeter needle for the hat and I'm making the 144 stitch count version, which is the size medium. The yarn I'm using is really special. It came out of my very special hoard of fingering weight yarn. It is the only skein of Mitchell's Creations yarn that I have. And I got this for get, the Get Your Yarn Wishes Granted campaign a while ago. And it's fingering weight, 7525 Superwash Merino and Nylon. 463 yards so it's a, got a bit extra yardage in the colorway paradise lost which is one of the most beautiful yarn cakes i've ever seen honestly it is so gorgeous it's getting a little poofy at the top now but when i pulled it off the ball winder it was like utter perfection let me show you what this is working up like i have officially finished as of today the four inches of ribbing it's not exactly self-striping because it's a spiral. So it did, I don't think it would have mattered where I started in the skein. It's still going to spiral. It's not going to it's not going to exactly stripe, but this is perfect. This reminds me of Lisa Frank, which if you were a 90s kid or an early 2000s kid, you know, she's the one who designed all like the magical neon unicorn all kinds of stuff. So I've done 4 inches of ribbing. I then did one row which you can, you can barely see. <laughs> one row of stockinette in the 2.75 millimeter needles. And then I've done one row in the 3.5, 3.25 needles. That's what these are. This is just a fixed circular. Again, Chowgu red lace. I love my Chowgus. And this is gonna be put away <laughs> because this is four inches. And then what is going to happen is there's gonna be eight inches of straight stockinette in the round, eight inches. This should give me plenty plenty of straight knitting to do while i'm in the hospital so i i am obsessed with it as much as i want to work on this constantly i'm not going to and i should say those socks in this hat these projects have only gone with me to work so i've only been doing those on my lunch breaks so it took me like three lunch breaks to get half an hour to do the two toes and then four inches of ribbing took me all of the rest of the lunch breaks <laughs> since the last time you saw me. So I don't know how many that is, probably like eight or nine, but I am kind of surprised to know just in doing that and in working on the cardigan that I'm going to show you later, I think that my knitting has gotten much faster and not specifically my knitting, my purling. 
the giant transition shawl that I made hmm, earlier this year and finished that I was really, really excited to have done because it was massive, massive, massive. Ooh. So much purling. It really did do the job and make me way better at purling, which of course it did because it was thousands and thousands and thousands of stitches. But I am so much faster and I have really, really noticed that when doing these two projects, as well as the cardigan that I will show you in a minute. Now, let's see here. Let's talk some crochet. I'm gonna save the knitted cardigan till the end because it's going to be the most in depth because <laughs> there's so much going on. I'm just going to grab this project you have not seen in quite a while. It's living in a, this bag I got from Faye of the Crochet Circle podcast. It was one of her limited edition um, waxed canvas and fancy Harris Tweed bags. And living in here is something that has had no love in quite some time, but I'm very low on my whip count right now. So this is Holst Garn Super Soft. This is a light fingering weight yarn. You can hold it double to get a DK, I believe. Uh, it is very, very inexpensive. I would not say it is super soft. <laughs> it's super soft compared to some very wooly wools, and it certainly will soften up as it washes, but this is not merino. So if you are sensitive to wool, you may be sensitive to this. I, I don't know. <laughs> we'll see at the end of this cardigan if I need to put a little bit of lining right around my neck. I know that it's not gonna bother me on my shoulders or my arms or anything like that, but it may bother me on the back of my neck. So if that is the case, I will take a little bit of black silk and sew that in because silk and wool go perfectly together. The other thing I'll say about this wool is it is very, very inexpensive. I got, it was on sale, but I think I got 700 grams. This is 500 grams. And I'm pretty sure I got four, 200 more grams in 50 gram skeins for like 50 bucks, 40 to $50, including shipping. This is an amazing yarn. This is why I'm using this yarn because it's very affordable. And in here is the Obsidian Cardigan, which is a cardigan pattern I started working on at the beginning of this year and then quarantine happened and I kind of gave up on it. <laughs> so this is what it looks like. You can see that it, it has ribbing shoulder detail ribbing and then it's going to be kind of like a boxy drapey type of cardigan this is where i was last time where this stitch marker was so i've done a few inches which honestly is a fair amount because of how long each row takes because of course i'm starting there and then i go all the way across the back and then to the other side so i am going to try <laughs> to put this on for you. It's very stiff. Uh, one thing about Holzgarn is it has a lot of spinning oil in it, so it's a bit stiff um, and it will leave color on your finger when you're working with it. It's gonna come out in the wash. The swatch I did for this is so gorgeous and plump. Like you think it looks kind of stringy and holy. That is all gonna be filled in right here in between these stitches it's gonna plump up beautifully. So you can see the ribbing goes straight down. There will be a border treatment as well. And this goes right to below my bust. So I have quite a long ways to go <laughs> still, but this is very mindless making once you get past the join. So essentially the construction on this is you work the ribbing first, then you work down the front, you complete the armholes on both sides and then you join and you work back and forth in rows. So there's no way this pattern's getting published this year. <laughs> but, but it is my goal to have it published next year. So this is a cardigan pattern that will likely be coming in 2021. It has already been graded and I have written a good portion of the instructions, but I need to finish the sample, of course. <laughs> And I need to do the collar and the butt, like, you know, the collar, the, the elbow, armhole treatments. I need to get it tested, all kinds of stuff. So it's going to be a while. <laughs> Don't hold your breath anytime soon. But I, I really enjoyed working on that. I would do like one row 
I've done one row maybe every other night in the last two weeks. Just, I don't know why. I know why I put it down because at the beginning of quarantine, I was working from home. So I was working on cardigan projects, but then I had to go back to work in May to the office and they no longer became feasible to carry around. And then I was so sick because I was pregnant that I couldn't face a big project. So all of the big projects got put on the back burner, but they're really all I have left now. So I'm trying to get them to a point where I can do mindless things with them so that I will have something to work on after the baby is born that does not require brain power and so therefore is harder to mess up. The next project, let's just grab this one. It's living in this tote bag that says so much yarn, so little time. And it is a pattern I'm hoping, I should, should be, have it done by then, but I'm hoping to have it done by Christmas. It is going to be a doll for my niece. I talked about this briefly in the last episode. This is, let me find the front page. So the pattern is called Marine Adeline, Emily, and Candace Dolls. It is by Doo Doo Toy Factory. And if you go to my Ravelry, I have the pattern linked. You can only buy this on Etsy. I could not buy it on Ravelry or anywhere else. This is the version I'm going to make. The doll that looks like this. And so I've written down how I want the colors to go. So she's going to have purple pants, a mint colored skirt, a blue shirt, a mint colored collar, and then hot pink hair and hot pink shoes. That's the version I have decided to make. So you start with the head and I went digging in my acrylic stash. I have a bin full of random worsted weight acrylic. This is the only yarn that was even remotely, remotely close to any skin color. I have black and gray and I have neon colors. I do not have any tan or brown or chocolate or cream or this is the only one. And I don't know what yarn this is. It might be Red Heart Soft, Red Heart with Love. It splits like nobody's business, but I don't have anything else. <laughs> and I figure it's fine. It's for a doll and it is for a little white girl. So she'll be fine. I will, I am going to make some brown dolls in the future, especially for my baby. I want them, I want this girl to have dolls in all different shapes and sizes. So I have just started the head. It's a fairly good size head, I think. This is going to be a fairly good size doll. This is the top of the head. I've just finished the increases, so now I have to work straight for like 10 rounds and then do the decreases. So I think that you actually work, the way this doll is constructed is you work the head and the arms. Then you start with the feet. You work up, you join both feet together, you do the body all the way up to the neck. And then you attach the head to the neck and the arms. And then you do the collar and the skirt and the hair. That So the hair is like a, a cap that you crochet and then put on the already stuffed head and sew down. And then the hair is several, is like a piece that you put here and here. And then the shoes are separate. So there's gonna be some seaming involved because I do not want any part of this doll to come undone because she's, my niece is only a year and a half. So she's not quite, I don't trust her with small things. I may do, I may do embroidered eyes. I haven't decided. I'm using a four millimeter hook, which is creating quite a tight fabric, which is of course what you need for amigurumi because you don't want the stuffing to come out. I, the reason that I don't do a ton of amigurumi is because it hurts my hand and it hurts my arm crocheting at such a tight gauge. So I've just been working on this on and off a little bit at a time because it bothers me. I wouldn't recommend this pattern if you're an absolute beginner because a lot of amigurumi patterns assume that you know certain things. So you know how to increase, you know that you're working in a spiral and you're not joining in rounds. So you can see that there's no like specific join that you can see anywhere. That's because I'm working in a spiral. I always, always, always mark my first stitch of the round. And then this is just holding my active stitch. So <laughs> that's a tip. So I, I will be able to figure this out, especially because the person who wrote this pattern, uh, English is not their first language, which is totally fine. I will, I will be just fine, I think. 
in figuring this out. I've had a lot of practice reading patterns in my life, but I wouldn't recommend it for a super beginner. I would find something a little easier. So this is the color that the doll's face, arms, and legs will be. Then there will be purple for her pants. Pretty sure this is Red Heart Super Saver. Mint for her skirt and collar. This is also Red Heart Super Saver. Blue for her shirt. This is Sincerely, which is like an old Joann's yarn. Like you can't even get this yarn anymore, I don't think. <laughs> this is the colorway turquoise. And then the pink for her hair and for her shoes will be Vanish Choice in <laughs> Shocking Rose. <laughs> That is so neon. So this is all just came out of my bin of random acrylic that I have collected over the years. And I'm excited about that. I think it's gonna be really, really, really cute. As long as I can get it done by Christmas, we'll be fine. If I can't get it done by Christmas, well then I'll just buy her a present and she can have it for her birthday in March. I am not stressing about it. Ain't nobody got time to be stressed out about crochet right now. Speaking of being stressed out about crochet, <laughs> I have, it's not exactly a tale of woe, but I am gonna have to frog this and restart it. It is, I have three cardigans on the needles. <laughs> one is the obsidian cardigan that you saw. The second is this one. This is Chelsea cardigan. It's patterned by Vicky Chan. And the third one is my knit Skyrim cardigan. So this has been living in for the whole time, the bag that I got from Clarizabeth of Crochet Cakes. And it's a Halloween bag. And let me find the front page of this very involved pattern <laughs> so that you can see what this is supposed to look like and then I shall show you what I have done and why it has to be ripped out. Uh, of course. Of course I can't find it now. So I don't even know if I can show it to you. Oh, there it is. This is the Chelsea cardigan. It's a pattern by Vicky Chan. So the way that you work this pattern is you do the back panel first in a square. Then you, I think, work front and like right and left front panels. And then you join under the arms and then you go back and forth, I think. I'm actually not entirely sure that's correct. I have gotten through the back, the back square but it is going to have to be frogged. The yarn that I am using, I got quite a while ago from Ella of No Catchy Name. She had three of these. This is Knit Picks Hawthorne Fingering in Graffiti Speckle. And it's 80% superwash wool, 20% nylon, 357 yards for 100 grams. I was worried about not having enough to make a cardigan, even though it's lace with just three of these. So I found another ball on Ravelry D Stash. And because it's speckled and lace, I don't think it's going to be that big of a deal if the dye lots don't match exactly because Knit Picks does not make this yarn anymore. So, <laughs> this is how much I have left of the first cake. And I have even blocked this to see if I could get it to be the size it needs to be. No, I'm going to have to frog this because it's too small. It is beautiful. Like, how can I show you see if I can put this behind there yes you see this lace that is gorgeous so you start in the center and you're you're working in rounds in this square I am using four millimeter hook which is what the pattern calls for apparently I did not do a gauge swatch I started this a long time ago and then it just sat because it requires a lot of brain power to do this. So this is how much I've done since the last time, like maybe four or five rows. And once I got to the end of it, I was like, that is really small. This center piece, like here to here, should be eight inches. I am at seven inches after aggressively blocking it. And I don't wanna block it anymore, honestly. And besides, it's going, it's wool, it's not acrylic, I can't kill it, so it is going to shrink a little bit. I could make, so this pattern comes in like two sizes. There's a small, medium, large, because it has so much positive ease, and then a one to three X. I could do the extensions that make it 
a one to three X size, but I really would like this panel itself to be bigger. So I'm going to pull it out. <sighs> I'm going to pull it out. In fact, I may just start using a separate ball of yarn <laughs> and I'm just going to go up. So I'm at a four millimeter hook right now. I'm going to use a five millimeter hook. One of the reasons I know that this is so tight is because it has all these chain stitches and I chain really small. So it's gorgeous and it's going to get pulled out <laughs> because it's just too small for, I could make it work, but I don't want to make it work. I want the aesthetic that I was going for. And I don't know why I didn't do a gauge watch whenever I started this. It was so long ago. I don't even know. Like I haven't touched that in literally ages. If you can hear, <laughs> I don't know if you can hear this or not, but it is pouring outside. We have a tropical storm currently like hitting us. So I think it's Ada, one of the letters of the Greek, Greek alphabet. It's just a tropical storm. We're fine. We are in a black house. There's nothing gonna happen. The worst thing that might happen is the power might go off. Maybe some limbs will fall down. I kind of doubt even that's gonna happen. We're not on the coast, so our road floods down at the end, but our house is not going to flood. This Florida, we go through hurricanes all the time, so please don't worry about us. <laughs> this just just a tropical storm. We have plenty of toilet paper, we have plenty of food. We will be just fine. Um, in fact, by the time you see this, a tropical storm will have been gone for like two days <laughs> because I'm recording on a Wednesday and you're not going to see this till Saturday morning. Okay, let me tell you about the Skyrim cardigan. This is the one that has had the most work the past two weeks. It's living in this giant bucket bag that my friend Caitlin made me. The Skyrim cardigan is the long line cardigan pattern by Hoki Locatelli. It is a paid for pattern. It is a very unique construction. You start at the back of the neck, work down to a certain thing, and then you work a front panel, a left front panel, work a back, increase, and then you join under the arms. I have joined under the arms. It has been my goal to join under the arms before the baby comes so that I can just have plain knitting to do. So I have done that and I have worked out all the numbers for the color fade. I have actually started fading in just last night, color four of eight, because of course, this is my Skyrim cardigan made in Skyrim yarn. And that's not all, I've also worked part of a sleeve cap. So there are three balls of yarn attached to this right now. So I'm gonna try, I, there's no way I can try this on for you. <laughs> the cable's too small anyways, but I'm gonna try and show you. So the first ball of yarn, Let's see, let me untangle this. It is currently upside down. So let's do this. So this is the top, ignore the bazillion ends on the inside. So we have the top. Last time I had finished the back panel to below this where you join for the sleeves and I had finished this left front panel. And then this time I finished the right front panel and I have joined under the sleeves and gotten like a couple inches, if you can see that. So this is what this armhole looks like. And I have this much done after the armhole. So the top most pale colorway is called Solitude. After Solitude, so Solitude right here, we start fading into Dawn Star, which is another city in Skyrim. Then from Dawn Star, we are fading into Winter Hold, which is this right here. And I just, just added down here, Morthal. So color four. So after I joined under the arms, I wanted to get a, a little bit of progress so that I could tell if it was actually going to fit or not. Then I tried it on. The armholes somehow turned out to be like an inch longer than called for in the pattern. So I should have, let me see if I can find the schematic. The armhole should be 
for the size I'm making like seven and three quarters inches and really I'm at like nine, <laughs> nine inches. I do not mind having a bigger armhole, honestly. I would rather, I do not like things that are like up in here. It's not okay, I don't like it at all. And I tried it on and I'm pretty okay with the armhole. I was prepared to rip it out, <laughs> but I'm fine with it. I would rather it be just the way the cardigan is going to fit anyways, I would rather it have a little more room in the armhole. However, that created a problem because I have to pick up all of these stitches and do short row sleeve cap shaping. So the pattern calls for the size I am making to pick up 45 stitches from here to the middle of the armhole and then 45 on the other side. I tried picking up 45. It looked awful because I mean, yes, the armhole was a little bit bigger than called for, but I had, there's no way, even if I had subtracted that inch, inch and a quarter, that I would have been able to pick up 45 stitches. I really needed more. And of course, in picking up stitches, like for a button band or something, typically you pick up like three for every four rows, three stitches every four rows. So I did, I tried 45, ripped it out. Didn't like that at all. There were holes, it looked gapey, unacceptable. Then I picked up as many as felt good, <laughs> which ended up being like 69 on each side, which is a huge amount. So of course, I have to get down to the right amount of stitches for my arm. I don't want all of this extra fabric. So I have to decrease. So I worked a little bit of the sleeve cap and was like, okay, I need to decrease. Duh. <laughs> so I ripped it back. Then I worked almost all of the decreases, but the sleeve, <laughs> then I tried it on and I was like, oh, you dummy. <laughs> you need to change the decrease rate because I was doing all of the decreases up front thinking that that would be fine, but actually it was making the sleeve cap go straight down. So it was straight right here. There was no expansion. And of course your shoulder is narrow here, but expands. So it needs to have more room. So I ripped that out. So I ripped the sleeve cap out like two and a half times. Then I finally was like, okay, so if I have this many stitches and I need to get to this many stitches, I have this many extra. So it turned out I had like, let's see, how many extra stitches? This is my math worksheet. So I had 131 stitches total and I need to get down to 97, which means I need to decrease two stitches 17 times. So my decrease setup was to do the short row wrap and turn sleeve cap in a four row panel. So the, the short row wrap and turn is you do the wrap and turn, there's a two row repeat. So, but I changed it to a four row repeat where on the first one I did the wrap and turn and I decreased by two and then I purled, then I did the regular one and then I purled. So I have to, I still have one more round of decreases to get rid of the last two stitches on this sleeve cap. However, <laughs> I have to finish fading from the third color into fourth color on the body before I can finish this because I'm also fading this at the same time. Which let me tell you, that was a pain in the butt. I, you can even tell right here is where I was fading and it looks a little messy. From far away, you cannot tell and everywhere else you cannot tell. And I think my wrap and turns on the backside are gorgeous, even where the decreases are, beautiful. And if for some reason I don't like it, I can always mattress seam this together to reinforce the seam a little bit. And honestly, if I mattress seam this together on the front, you would never even know that I kind of made a mess out of those, out of the fade. Because this part of the cardigan, I'm fading, I'm doing two rows in one direction, like two knit rows, two purl rows, two knit rows, two purl rows for the fade, so I can have a fade every other row. But here I'm picking up wrap and turns and I'm not knitting in the round. When I'm fading the sleeve, I'm gonna be using helical knitting, I hope, but I'm not knitting in the round yet. I'm going back and forth and I still have to go back and forth until there's like so many stitches left on either side of this marker and then I will have the 97 called for and then I can <laughs> go around in a circle. So <laughs> I want to get through the fade portion of the 
third into fourth color on the body, which I have eight more rows to do of. And then I will cut the third color yarn and I will attach it here. I will do the fade <laughs> and do part of the sleeve. And then my plan is to go back and start this sleeve cap as well. I would love for both sleeves to be past the sleeve cap before the baby comes, especially now that I know how what I'm doing. I have tried this on. I put this on a bigger cable, so the body of it, and I put the sleeve on a bigger cable, I would say maybe four, eight rows ago, and I tried on the sleeve cap. I would say I need like one more inch of width on the shoulders, but this is unblocked, so it will be, I think it will be perfectly fine because I can hold, like I can stretch this with no problem to fit exactly how I want it to. I was happy with how the sleeve cap fit, happy with how it looked. So this is truly a Mission Impossible Mal project. Mission Impossible Mal is like to do something that really challenges you this year that it will be ongoing next year because there's no way this is gonna be done by the end of the year. But I can't believe I just started on the fourth color. Can't believe it. And this is how much I have left of the first color. Not much, but that will be plenty to pick up the stitches and do the top part of the sleeve cap before I fade into color two and then color three and then color four. And I'm going to pull out color five, but not the rest of them. They'll be a surprise as they join. This is color five. Ooh, this poor yarn cake is having a hard life. <laughs> So that is the Skyrim cardigan. I am honestly shocked by how much progress I have achieved on that. I have eight more giant body rows to go. And then I can work on, go back to working on the sleeve cap. Fade for 12 more rows. Then I'll be able to cut the second color on the sleeve cap and start working on the third color for a bit. And then I can go back and pick up the left front shoulder, which picking up the stitches is really the most annoying part. So yeah, what a project, what a project. I, it's so much frogging, so much ripping out, but honestly, I'm not upset about it. I feel like I learned something. <laughs> and as long as it fits, this is what I told my husband, as long as it fits, I am ecstatic, ecstatic. Whew, that's a lot, wasn't it? <laughs> I do have some happy mail to show you as well. I'm gonna mix this happy mail, some of it's yarn, some of it's baby related. I'm gonna mix this in with the bump date. I'm going to try to stand up and give you a bump date because it's pretty much gonna take up the whole screen now. <laughs> this is what it looks like. This is a 35 week pregnant belly. By the time you see this video, I will have started week 36. So yeah, <laughs> that's crazy. One, pretty much one more week and then the baby could come at any point, although she's pretty solidly in there. I don't think she's coming early. It would be really nice if she would come right after Thanksgiving. That would be ideal. because I'm tired of having her in my body. So that's, that's what she's looking like. And I have some things to show you. This showed up actually today, which was so exciting. It's from Amanda, who is a lovely patron and viewer of this podcast. It's a baby book and I haven't had time to read it yet, but I'm going to after this. It's called Mother Bruce. <laughs> and I think that's fabulous. It's a, of course, a delightful book. Thank you so much, Amanda. I'm very, very excited about this book. I'm really excited to read to this baby. So thank you for the book. So excited. This is yarn and baby related. This, I'm gonna try and do this without making too much noise because I'm going to pull everything out. So, This is from Shell Shell Crochet, which her name is Michelle. She's delightful. She sent me, which I think so rude, but I haven't opened it. She sent me a card that says open on December 1st. How am I supposed to wait that long? Michelle, 
honestly. How am I supposed to wait that long? But I haven't opened it, so I've been very good so far. This is her card, Shell Shell Crochet. So she made me a little pouch, like a little drawstring pouch, and in here is some peppermint tea, super mint, which I have been living on anyways because nausea. There is Bernat Handicrafter, and that is the same yarn. This is a cotton yarn, I think, yes. 100% cotton. So this is the same yarn that she made this adorable little washcloth out of, which I know is supposed to be for the baby, but I'm stealing it. Everything can be for the baby, right? I'm gonna use this on my face. I love, oh, it's so soft. I love it. And the cutest little poncho. <laughs> so I would imagine, I think this would probably fit my 18 month old niece now-ish. So it'll be a little while before she can wear it, but it's precious. It's really precious and really beautiful. I love the way the colors worked up and she can wear it however she wants. So I'm just delighted. Thank you so much for that. It's d just adorable, adorable, adorable. Um, I'm gonna show you one more baby thing and then I have a yarn thing to show you. So this surprise came in the mail. Ooh, I can't reach. <laughs> right after I recorded the last podcast actually so I didn't get a chance to share it then because it came like I literally finished recording and was uploading and then the door <laughs> the doorbell rang so this is from Ronnie who is a viewer of this podcast and she sent me some baby things one of which was a set of muslin blankets honestly you can never have too many of these ever never have too many of these as well as some very cute baby pajamas this one has elephants and this one is pink. Oh, they're attached. <laughs> so I can have to show you this way. So cute. And then this is a baby bath time set, which the funniest thing about this is it has baby bath, baby wash and shampoo and baby lotion. And this is a baby, is a, a regular body wash for an adult. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. So uh, very excited because I, the baby and I shall match smells. But also, how cool is it that they made this baby basket and then put something in there for the mom? Thank you so much, Ronnie. It was so generous of you. So generous of you. And the final thing that came in the mail, I just realized I haven't emailed you to tell you it got here. It got here like a day and a half ago. Gosh, I'm the worst. This is a package from the UK from Andy and Angela who of course are at Xpendi. They are lovely people and supporters of this podcast and they have spent yarn before, of course. And I'm going to try and show you everything that came in here. So some of this is for prizes as well. So the first thing they sent was this mini skein set called Bubblegum Sorbet and Sprinkles. Oh my gosh. This is 100 grams. They're absolutely beautiful. This is going to be a prize for some lucky person. Then they sent these two, which this is Gingerbread House. I'll show you their label. And this one is Lovebirds. And honestly, I think these need to go together. Maybe this should be like the grand. Do I want to keep them and hoard them for myself? Yes, but I'm not going to be selfish. I think that they need to live together and maybe be like a grand prize. One of the grand prizes for the Mission Impossible Mal or the Year of Classics or the Wizarding Mal. I think they need to go together. They're 100% or 75% Superwash Merino and 25% Nylon. They're so gorgeous. I think these would, they have to be together, right? They're just perfect. Oh, you did such a good job. Then, they sent me some little baby clothes all the way from the UK. They're little baby shirts, which are so, so cute. So these will be, I think these are six to nine months. So by June, probably, this baby will be wearing these. So very excited about that. Also some candy, which I have had a hard time not getting into. 
but now I will. There are fruit pastilles, which are basically like gummy candies. And of course, some delightful tea, which one of these, I love this. Love this one. Also this one. This one, I, ooh, I've never seen before. And neither have you, because I threw it on the floor. <laughs> Feel new organic. I don't know what that is, but I'm gonna try it. And then finally, there was a special skein in there with a note that said, this one is for you. <laughs> Please make Nova something with it. Nova will be the name of our daughter, who will be born very shortly. And they dyed this when they were missing their own grandkids during lockdown so much. And this is the colorway, Flo and Rudy's Ice Cream Sundae. Oh my gosh. Isn't this amazing? I love the speckles. I love the speckles. I bet I could get, I could get a baby cardigan out of this for sure. 100 grams? I'm not starting any more baby projects until after she's born because she could come at any time and I don't want like a languishing zero to three month old whip <laughs> that I never finish and then she grows out of it. But this will definitely be saved for her. So whether it's immediately that it gets made into something for her or eventually <laughs> made into something for her, it will belong to her. And I love it. And I'm going to leave a link to at Expendi down below. You should go support them because they dye fabulous yarn and they also do everything they can to raise awareness for EDS, which is Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, which is like a connective tissue disorder. It's super painful and also super rare. And therefore, they had to raise awareness because not even a lot of doctors know about it. So that is their goal, <laughs> is to dye pretty yarn and raise awareness for Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. one final thing to share with you and then we've got to wrap it up because i am hungry y'all i'm really hungry i've been starving today this morning the nausea was so bad and then it kind of like calmed down a little bit in the afternoon and starting up again so i think i need to eat something what i want to say is a very special public thank you to every single person who is a patron of this podcast if you don't know i have a patreon account it's linked directly down below you can join for as low as two dollars a month um, there's all kinds of tiers you will get a love letter from me every single week although the last two weeks i have been so sick i couldn't do it but um my plan is always to do it every single week to connect with you and hopefully once this baby is out of my body i can do a little bit more vlogging and more interaction i've just been so sick but the point is, my patrons have supported me all year long, supported this podcast all year long, and I have just been saving, like basically the, the income comes in every month into Patreon and I haven't done anything with it because last year I used some of that money, I was going to use it to go to a conference and to go on vacation, but then of course everything got canceled and then we used that money to pay bills because... <laughs> we were on lockdown and I didn't know if I was going to keep my job and my husband changed jobs and everything was up in the air. But since that time, I've just been saving the money in there because you know, you still don't know what could happen. We're still like in the middle of a recession. There's still like a pandemic going on. And because of my patrons, this is why I'm saying a very public thank you. And hopefully I can get through this. I definitely did not get through the video. Thank you to them without crying, but maybe I can get through this one because of their support. I am going to get to take an additional two weeks of maternity leave because I don't have any paid maternity leave. I can take maternity leave at my job, but it's not paid. Um, I can take up to three months unpaid leave. I do have a week of vacation and I have a week of sick time. So that's two weeks. Um, there's one other week that I'll be getting paid for. And then um, the, so if you don't know, I'm a legal assistant during the day for 40 hours a week. And then on my weekend and night job is I'm a pastor. So my church is covering a week. So that would be four weeks that I could get to take off after the baby is born to spend with this baby, getting to know a tiny new person and, you know, healing from giving birth, etc. And that was really all I thought I was going to be able to do. But because of the support of my patrons, I am going to get to take six weeks off instead of four weeks off. And that means more to me than anything in the entire world. 
Like I can't even put into words how much it means to me to be able to have that extra bonding time with the baby and to not have to panic <laughs> about going back to work right after Christmas and you know, to, to pay bills. So I do need to stop. I really want this to be like the longest drawn out thank you of all time because I have so many emotions about it, but I'm going to cry and I can't handle that right now. I have too many emotions and too many feelings. So just know, I just want all of you to know if you watch the podcast that there is a community of people who have gone so far above and beyond <laughs> that their support all year long means that I get to spend a little bit of extra time with this little baby bump as soon as she's out and that is magical and wonderful and beyond anything that I could ever hope for so <laughs> I'm gonna stop I'm gonna go get some dinner and hopefully get this podcast uploaded in case the power goes out tonight because of the tropical storm I hope you're doing well wherever you are and leave me a comment below let me know what you're working on let me know how your holiday plans are going we're not going anywhere obviously because i'm about to have a baby but <laughs> leave me a comment let me know how you are i love interacting with you i love doing this it's one of the highlights of my life and i'm so glad you all are here thank you thank you thank you and until i see you again happy crafting and make sure you're kind to yourself bye friends